so far we've looked at putting clips on the timeline and then trimming them there. That works for some kinds of trims that you want to do, but in other occasions you may actually want to trim the clip before you put it on the timeline, and it's very much the same kind of process. In order to do that, I'm going to actually open up some other footage that has kind of more distinct beginning and ending points than these waterfall clips that we've been working with, and it's also a good way to kind of review the whole library and event structure that we looked at earlier. So you might remember that earlier we created uh, an event up here in um, our event browser uh, called Emily. Um, in case you've forgotten, you can also just right click and you can add a new event uh, anytime that you want to. In this case though, I want to be able to actually um, add uh, some, some new footage to that, to that Emily project. So I'm going to right click on it and then go to import media and then from the windows that popped up here, we just used the sense of place footage at the bottom. I'm going to close that little folder and go to the folder here that says Emily interview. Again, I'm going to click on the little arrow there to reveal the, uh, the different clips that are available. And you can, see, again, play those by just clicking on any single one there. And we have a few different kinds of clips here. Uh, for one, we have two uh, interviews with Emily. These basically are clips where um, we have kind of a wide view of her sitting in this chair talking, um, and then we have a closer view of that. It's essentially almost the same interview. We, had, uh, we asked Emily the same questions twice and had the camera framed on this closer shot through on one of those, and then we went through and did it again with the same camera where we zoomed out to a wider view to give us some options in the editing process. We also have what are sometimes called B-roll or cutaway footage shots like this that actually show Emily doing the thing that she's talking about, in this case, editing. So there's a close-up of her hand, there's a wider view sort of looking over her shoulder uh, at, the, at the editing console that she's working with. So we have some different shots that we can use of her uh, doing some editing there. Uh, we also have some other shots of, of, of Emily that we'll get to a little bit later when we start talking about, um, about doing the um, about adjusting the sound in the program. So I'm going to bring in these few clips first of all, the, um, the cutaway shots and the two interview clips. So I'm going to select those four clips. Again, I, I clicked on the first one, held down the shift key on the keyboard, clicked on the last one to select all the clips in between. Do that again for you there. So I'm going to click on the first one, hold down the shift key and click on the last one to highlight those. And then on the far right hand side here, click on the button that says Import Selected. When I do that, they should now appear uh, up in my Emily project up here. Notice, by the way, that if I click on Waterfalls, there's all my Waterfalls clip. And if I click on Emily, there are my Emily clips. Now we have the project that we started here, which actually should probably be in this Waterfalls folder. And it's really easy actually to move these around. I can grab this and just drag it onto this Waterfalls item right here and it'll move that project into the waterfall. So if you do make a mistake placing something where you want it, it's not really hard to move it around. And by the way, I can also name this project if I choose. Remember, this project it represents the timeline where we were arranging our clips down here. So I can click on the current name and then give it a name that's more descriptive of what's actually in it. Again, all uh, for the idea of trying to be able to find the materials that you want easily when you're looking through hundreds and hundreds of clips. So I'm going to go to the event here called Emily. Now at this point there is no project in this Emily folder or in the uh, Emily event. So we have one in Waterfalls along with all our waterfall footage, but we don't yet have one in the, in the uh, Emily event. So I can, I can remedy that by hovering over the event and, and right clicking and creating a new project. Or I can also go up to the menus at the top and go new and project there. Any one of those will add a new project. Now you'll notice initially it's going to ask me to name this project. So I can go ahead and type in a name there and click OK. Notice it's also telling me that it's going to put this in the event called Emily. I could also put it in the events called Waterfalls if I wanted to instead with their little pop-up menu. Click OK. So now we have that project. Notice the project has that same little kind of uh, clapboard icon at the top here, but the little picture below that is just black at the moment uh, because there was nothing on our timeline. So remember that this project, 
represents this timeline. If you're not sure of that, you can also see that it shows you the title of the timeline that you have open right now. So that title matches that title. So you'll know that you're on the correct project if you want to. Okay, so now it's not a bad idea just to kind of look through these clips that we have to work with. The first thing I would do is just lay down the interview footage. So take the footage of Emily speaking and, uh, and put it on the timeline because we want to go through this and kind of pick out the best parts of what she says. So I'm going to take this, this clip and, um, and show you how you can go through and actually pick out the best parts of what she says. You could put the clip down on the timeline and trim it there, but we can actually pick out those parts before, she actually, before we actually begin putting them on the timeline. Now something that's also helpful in this case is to change how you view these clips in this window. Right now you'll notice that these clips are just represented by this little thumbnail picture, just a single little picture that represents the clips. But you actually see a couple of those pictures here. That's because you can change how your clips appear in the, in the viewer window here, or sorry, in the browser window, by going up to the top of the window, and there are a couple of different tools up here. There is, for example, a search tool, so you could type in a, a name of a clip and go find it more easily if you had a lot of them. And there's also this clip appearance button. If I click on that, it pops up a window here that lets me change the way my clips look in the window. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see that better. This upper one, as I zoom in and zoom out on that by sliding the little slider to the right, just simply makes the clips bigger, makes them taller so that it's easier to see them, um, you know, see the picture on them and that sort of thing. So it's just making them physically larger. The little slider right below that that has a clock on the side, a little stopwatch over here, and the, this number over this 30 seconds actually lets me change the clips from just a single thumbnail picture to more of that film strip idea that we talked about earlier. It actually is gonna stretch the clips out based on their length like that. Now this gets confusing to look at, but right now I've zoomed in to the 5S and that 5S refers to five seconds. And what that means now is instead of just being one picture like we saw before, this Emily interview clip is now showing me a new picture, a new frame every five seconds. So it's turned into that kind of film strip idea. So the clip starts here and ends down here. And every five seconds, it's showing me a new still image of what's, you know, where we are in the clip there. So you can actually see some movement in her head as she's talking here. That makes it easier, again, to find uh, particular parts of a clip as, especially when there's, you know, uh, visual changes in the way that the clip looks. Something else that's useful in this case, since we're going to be editing, editing audio, is to show something called waveforms. If I check that little box, then it expands the clip a little bit more and shows the squiggly lines here that represent the sound that you've recorded. The taller spikes in the sound here represent the loudest parts of what we're hearing, and the lower parts down here are quieter parts. So it's pretty likely that these kind of flat spots that you see here and down here are places where Emily's not talking. She's taking in a breath between sentences. Those can be really useful when you're trying to find important parts of the interview. So let's just play this clip, this Emily interview three close up here, um, and let you hear what she says, and then we'll go back and pick out some parts of it to use in our, uh, in our practice. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, oh, okay, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna, so I was gonna mm. ask you, are we doing that, her answering that again, or can we ask her if a If you can stand to do it again. Yeah. So you'll notice we have some kind of false starts there at the beginning, where the camera operator's talking with the producer, and, and, uh, and then we also oh, okay. have right. Emily starting and stopping right. a few times. So one of the things that look, okay, something that looks really weird when you're editing, um, if you don't do it right, well, okay, let me start that again, that sounded very negative. <laughs> um, uh, one of the things to watch out for when you're editing is doing a jump cut. Okay, so that part, that sentence that she just began there is really where we want to start this. Uh, we have a couple of false starts there, so obviously you don't want to incorporate that into your finished product. You just want the best parts of what she said. So where she actually started speaking, we can sort of visually see that uh, by looking at the waveform. So if I zoom in a little bit here, you can see that there's this kind of little flat spot, and that's the quiet spot between where she stops her second false start and begins um, speaking um, in, the, in the take that we want to use. Now, I can mark this spot um, by, by marking what's called an endpoint. So to do that, if I position the little skimmer right over that and then click and hold the mouse button, notice that you have this little yellow box 
where I can highlight a portion of the clip that I want to use. So instead of the entire clip, I'm saying I just want to use the clip from this point to this point. And as you drag, it'll give you an idea with that little box that's popped out to the side how long this, the segment is. But it's a really good way to just be able to pick out parts of a longer clip that you want to use before you put them on the timeline. Okay, so let me just play a little bit of this and we'll figure out where we want this clip to end. So I'm going to position a little skimmer right at the beginning of that clip and then I'm going to push the, sp the space bar on the keyboard or the play button over here to begin playing that clip again. Uh, one of the things to watch out for when you're editing is doing a jump cut and that's when you cut between two shots that are really similar. Um okay, so say that we wanted to end it right when she says between two clips that are really similar. That's in this little area right there. So again, I can get close to the right spot in that just by ending the clip right in that area right in there. So I can grab the out point of my clip and drag it over to there, which is kind of roughly where she ends. Remember, even once I put this on the timeline, I can still trim it. I can still adjust the length of the clip at that point. So I'm going to play a little bit of this. Uh, one of the things to watch out for when you're editing is doing a jump cut, and that's when you cut between two shots that are really similar. Okay, so there you can see that we have the part that we want to use pretty much marked out. So now I could move this down onto the timeline, and when I drag it down, just the same way that we dragged it down before, it's only going to move the selected portion there. Something that you can do that's really useful in this case, though, is also to mark this so that it's easier for you to uh, go find it later on. So you can just go through and pick out all the parts you want to use and then go back later and drag them down. To do that, we want to look at the keyboard again here for a second. Um, marking that on the timeline is called uh, uh, marking it as a favorite. So on the timeline here, we have all the letters and numbers. The F key uh, is used for favoriting that. So if I just tap the letter F, it's actually going to highlight that clip on the timeline. So I'll just tap it there. And if you look on the screen here, you can see that up, up at the top of the screen, there's a green bar that's appeared there that tells me now that I've isolated that as a favorite. So if I move this, uh, this little outline that we've created over it, that little green bar is still there. If I click on it, it'll reselect just that portion of the clip. So it makes it really easy to go through. Another thing I wanted to show you is that instead of manually dragging this little box, you can also just play through the clip and then uh, find the place where you want it to start and you can use the keyboard to mark those endpoints and out points. So let me just play a little bit more of the clip here. Similar, um, like with an interview, if you have a shot of a person and you just take a sentence out uh, because you're editing for content, but it just kind of jerks because it's the same shot, but it shifts just a little. So you can cover that up with B-roll of relevant activities or photos, uh, or you can also get another shot, a different angle of the same interview, ask the same question over again. Okay, so say that we want to use that little segment um, from here, roughly, over to here. And again, I'm looking at the waveform there to help me kind of find the places where um, she's beginning and ending sentences. Okay, so I could now just position the little playhead right over that, that gap, and then looking at the keyboard again, instead of just clicking there, I can also use the I and O keys. I for marking the in point of the clip and O for marking the out point of the clip. So if we look at the screen, if I tap the I key there, it'll move my beginning part of that clip right to there. And then I can just move the skimmer down to the end. And then on the keyboard one more time, I can come over here to the O key. And when I tap that, it's then going to mark the ending point of the clip. So I've isolated just this portion. And again, if I want to favorite that, I can hit the letter F and it's going to mark that as the second portion that I want to use. Okay, so now we have the beginning portion we want. We've skipped all this business in between here where she's saying something that we don't care about using. So now we're ready to move this on the timeline. I'm going to click on the green bar, the little favorite bar there to highlight that. I can see my little hand appears here. And now I can drag this clip down onto the timeline. And again, I can just drop it there because it's just going to stick it right at the beginning of the timeline. And then I can go click on the, this, the other green bar for the second part and grab this down and drop it next to the first. Okay, now if I play this, I should have created a smooth audio edit, meaning that if we just listen to what she's saying, it should sound fairly continuous. It should sound like she ends one sentence and starts a new sentence and that they make sense when you hear them together. Even though we've cut out a portion of what she said, we've cut out a part that still makes it make sense when you listen to it together. So if you were just to listen to the audio of this and not pay attention to the video, it should sound okay. Let me just play a little bit for you here. 
Uh, one of the things to watch out for when you're editing is doing a jump cut, and that's when you cut between two shots that are really similar. So you can cover that up with B-roll of relevant activities or photos, uh, or you can also get another shot. Okay, so you can see that if you just listen to the audio of those two clips together, it actually sounds okay. Um, it actually sounds like um, she's just, you know, continuing a thought there and it's not too separate. But you'll notice if you look at the visual, we've created something called a jump cut. So as we play through this, you see where we run from this clip into this clip, there's a sudden snap in the position of her head uh, caused by the fact that we've cut out abortion. I can safely say that those clips will never match up. You know, you'll never be able to cut out a portion of an interview and just have them kind of magically match up. Uh, even though she's still sitting in the same chair, Jump there'll cut, be some change in the position of her expression really or the similar. position of her head. So you can cover that and up with that jump cut is considered not great form in editing, uh, but there's things that we can do to fix that. So in this case, I'm really just doing what's sometimes called a radio edit, where I just care about how it sounds, and I don't really care at this point about how it looks. So again, let me play that for you one more time. Uh, one of the things to watch out for when you're editing is doing a jump cut, and that's when you cut between two shots that are really similar. So you can cover that up with B-roll of relevant activities okay. or photos. So it sounds okay. Now, some of the mistakes that people make in this case is that they sometimes try to edit these too close. So they have the, the second sentence start immediately after the end of the first sentence, and they don't really give the person a chance to sort of take in a breath as they would if they were naturally speaking. So I oftentimes will just use that taking in of the breath to help me get the pacing, the timing of this so that it sounds natural. Okay, now you'll notice that for these clips on the timeline, if I wanted to trim these, they're pretty small. It's a little hard for me to get a hold of them and be able to trim them. So I can also change my view of the timeline window the same way that we changed our view of the clip browser earlier. To do that, way over on the right-hand side of the timeline over here, way over here, there's a, a variety of buttons that allow me to, to do a, a variety of things. This one though, looks just like the button that we looked at before up by the clip browser, and it lets me change the appearance of clips on the timeline. So if I click on that, it'll pop open a little window here. And again, I have a couple of different slider controls and then these, these buttons across the center. I zoom out a bit more so you can see that. The slider up here lets me zoom in and zoom out my view of the timeline. So if I slide this all the way to the left, it zooms out to the widest view of the timeline so I can see a larger space here. Uh, I can see more minutes and seconds. If I slide it to the right, it, it zooms in and reduces the amount of time that's visible in terms of the number of seconds from here over to here. So you can see it's not making the clip larger, it's just expanding my view of that particular clip. Now when you do that, it zooms in on the position of the playhead. So if I have the playhead over here where there's no clips and I start to zoom in, is actually going to keep that playhead and where it is on the screen. So if I want to zoom in on these clips over, over here, it makes sense for me just to grab the playhead, move it to that position, and then I can click and zoom in on the portion that I'm interested in working on. Okay, so that makes it easier for me then to be able to, to go in and do fine tuning and uh, trimming of these. Uh, the other clips in here allow you to make the clips taller on the timeline. So as I slide this little slider to the right, it makes the clips taller. If I slide it to the left, it makes them smaller. Uh, that's gonna be important when we start adding additional layers of video above and below the clips that are already on our primary storyline here. It's not too important right now. And then this collection of buttons across the center lets you change uh, what's important here. So if you're doing just video editing and you're not caring about the sound, I can click on this button on the far left and it basically high, or sorry, uh, exaggerates the audio, or if I click on the one further over here, it makes the video big and hides the audio, or makes the video kind of big and makes the audio smaller. So you can see that it's exaggerating the audio or exaggerating the video, depending on which one you're sort of focusing on. Okay, So that little clip appearance button will allow you to change the way your timeline looks. Now you can also scroll left and scroll right on the timeline. So if I have a whole bunch of clips, I can also just drag my finger over the mouse and scroll left or right. So if I have further clips here that are disappearing off the edge of the screen, for example, I can drag my finger on the mouse left or right to scroll left and right. Or there's also a, a scroll bar that appears down at the bottom down here that I can use to scroll left or right. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of these extra clips I added here by highlighting and then deleting them using the big delete key. 
Okay, so we've got our two clips here of Emily speaking, clip one and clip two. And again, we've created that Between radio two edit. shots that are really similar. So now you remember, can you can always trim these. So if you decide that the timing is not quite right and you want to add a little bit more time between the end of sentence one and the beginning of sentence two, you can trim to do that. One of the amazing things about trimming is that when you trim time off of a clip, that footage doesn't go away. It's basically just sort of hidden. I like to think of it as almost that you're just folding this footage under the other footage so that it's that it's hidden, but it's still visible. If I trim some time off a clip and decide I want it back, I can just drag it back out to its original length and make it just as it was when I first put it there. In fact, this clip rep represents the entirety of the entire interview clip up here, so I can actually stretch each one of these out to the full length of the clip if I want. Okay, so I'm gonna undo that a few times to put it back the way that it was before I started trimming it there and see if our timing Between is right. Two shots that are really similar. So you can cover that up with B-roll of relevant activities or photos, uh, or you can also get another. Okay, so that's how we can trim the clips up here in the browser window before we actually put them on the timeline. Again, just review, go up to the top of the timeline window, change the clip appearance slider up here um, so that you're stretching the clips out so that you see that film clip view where it's easier for you to see where the audio begins or ends. If you're editing for sound, you can also turn on or turn off those waveforms to make it easier to see where clips begin and end. You can highlight a portion of something that she's saying by placing the skimmer over the timeline and just clicking and dragging. Or you can also use the I and O keys on the keyboard to mark the end point of a clip, going further forward with the skimmer and then marking the out point of the clip by tapping the O key. And then if you want to favorite that clip, you can tap the letter F on the keyboard uh, to highlight it with the green bar at the top, and then you can drag that clip down onto the timeline and drop it wherever you need for it to be. So that's how you can trim clips before you put them on the timeline. Next, we'll take a look at how you can actually cover up that jump cut that we've, that we've created uh, by putting those two clips together.